You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby. Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of The Options Playbook. Well, hello, everyone. Happy earnings season. This week, we had the bulk of the FANG stocks, which uh, for some reason, maybe uh, the fact that Facebook is now referred to as Meta has kind of changed the acronym a little bit, but I don't hear FANG stocks that often. Uh, But FANG stocks are uh, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix and Google, but we've had a lot of those stocks change their names, but Fang is just kind of fun to say. So with that said, uh, so far, uh, Microsoft, we can throw in there too. Microsoft and Google have announced they haven't done that well. We are taping options, Playbook Radio, and it is Wednesday uh, and the markets are closed, so it is October 26th. Uh, Meta did announce earnings, uh, and they were just kind of mediocre. Uh, after their announcement, the stock was flat. So uh, tomorrow, which will be Thursday, we have uh, the two of the biggest things. We have Amazon and we have Apple that are announcing. Amazon always announces as a Thursday, and if you do listen to Options Playbook Radio, you would know that for many, many years, Amazon announces on Thursdays after the close, which always uh, creates an interesting pricing dynamic for the option contracts, because the weekly option contracts then, if they announce on the close on Thursday, they have one day to live. So we always have a tendency to look at uh, butterflies in Amazon, and I, I think we'll we'll keep that rocking and rolling. Amazon is a different beast now that it's gone through its 20 for 1 split, and the stock right now on the close is trading down, probably a little bit more about what happened in uh, Microsoft and also in Google. I mean, Amazon is a much more than an e-commerce company, company nowadays. Amazon Web Services obviously is a, a ginormous portion of their company and their earnings. So both Microsoft, uh, one of the things that Microsoft uh, struggled with was their Azure products, their cloud-based products. And uh, obviously Google just having a little bit of weakness has probably brought Amazon down. So this, right now it was down $4.94 trading at one fifteen sixty. Six. Okay, enough said about them. Let's do a trade on Amazon. We had a lot of fun with Amazon and some of the butterflies. So we're going to actually look at a bearish butterfly on Amazon. Uh, if the bears want to be bearish, then let's be bearish. And 
We will look at that trade, but we're going to hedge our risk, and it's going to be a little bit different trade than one that I haven't talked about that much, and it's mainly because Amazon now is a $115 stock. So we're going to actually look at inside the playbook. We don't talk about it very much. It's going to be a Christmas tree butterfly. It's going to be a version of that. Um, we don't have the exact trade that I'm looking to put on this week. It's got Another name for it would be a ratio butterfly, but we're going to sell two put spreads to help pay for one long put spread. And we're going to try to get this done for a net credit to the account because one of the things that we do want to happen is that if Amazon does go up, we do not want to have a loss on this trade. So that's what we're going to be looking to do. All right. Now, I went into a lot of detail about the trade going on this week, but last week we actually looked at a very simple trade. And every once in a while, we'll just take a step back and get away from the obscure option trading strategies and just mention that, you know, it's okay to just buy deep in the money option contracts on a stock that you like. And so we looked at AT&T last week and just saying that if you want to go out further in time, and you want to buy a stock like AT&T, which was trading right around $17. Last week when we taped the show, the markets were moving, so it wasn't an exact science when we were trying to uh, come up with the trade. And so uh, stock was right around $18. We went out to the June 16th expiration, and we went deep into money, and we bought something right around an 80 delta, if I recall, it might have been 83 delta. And we paid for that option contract $2.75. So AT&T, obviously an inexpensive stock. To buy 100 shares at 17 would be $1,700. Uh, but the markets are, are scary. So I kind of build this as, well, I didn't kind of. I did build it as a FOMO trade. So if you're looking at AT&T and you are bullish, but nervous, and I don't know how you can't be in this marketplace, uh, bullish but nervous strategy, most people think of a protective put, where you go out and you buy the stock, you go and buy an out-of-the-money put, and you limit your downside risk on that 100 shares of stock that you own. So for every 100 shares that you own, you buy one put that's out-of-the-money that fixates a sell price for that underlying stock. So in our situation, what we're going to look at doing, as opposed to buying that protection on 100 shares of stock, we're just going to buy a call option. And it works a lot like the protective put. We're going to limit our downside, but we're going to have unlimited upside. Just like if we bought a protected put, we have limited and known downside. We're fixating the sell price, but we own the stock, so we have unlimited upside. So this was a FOMO trade in my mind, uh, and AT&T did well. As a matter of fact, since we uh, talked about it on the show, the stock is up over 10%. And so with that said, um, if you look at where the stock was at exactly when we did the show, right, right around, well, it wasn't exactly, it was right around $17. And right now, as of the close, it's $18.14. That's where the underlying stock is trading at. And so it went up a little bit more than a point. So we bought an 80 Delta option contract. We should get a little less than a point, and that's what happened. So right now I'm seeing the quote uh, at the midpoint on our option contract that we talked about last week. It's right at uh, $3.70. So it's gone up $0.95. Cents. Stock went up $1.14. So the delta is kind of playing out here. We were looking for something that gave us uh, a lot of stock or gave us a significant amount of stock price representation. And that's what happened. The stock has gone up uh, a point, a dollar fourteen, and the option contract has gone up ninety five cents. All right. So simple enough. Well, you would just stay the course. I don't know. Uh, you may consider selling a call against it. And we talked about it last week. There just was not a lot of premium uh, selling any any short term two weeks to thirty days out. So we just decided not to do that. But now that you got a potential gain in the underlying, well, maybe you might think about it. If you have a target point at where, where you think AT&T might go, you might go and sell a call against your long call option and turn this trade into a fig leaf. All right. On to the next trade, Amazon. 
Okay, so I'm going to jump right into the trade. I gave you a lot of background on the trade. It's going to be a ratio butterfly. We're going to be, we flipped a coin, we decided we're going to be bearish. As always, on Options Playbook Radio, this is not meant to be a recommendation. We're just trying to learn. And on Amazon, we always have a tendency to do butterflies or something that takes advantage of time decay because you have such large theta on the last day of trading and Amazon announces on Thursday after the close. So we're going to look at this Friday's expiration, October 28th. We're going to buy the 105 put, sell three of the 102 puts, and then buy two of the 99 strike puts. Now, the expected move on Amazon is right around $9. So we're going further than the expected move out of the money. Our max loss only occurs at 99 or below. This is at the expiration date. So we're hoping the biggest thing, our biggest uh, scare would be a gap open more than the expected move to the downside because it wouldn't allow us to trade out of this trade. So that is your biggest risk that they announce earnings and they're, they're absolutely horrible and it moves extremely strong to the downside before you get time to react. Then our maximum risk would be $3 minus any credit received to put on the trade. And right now we're seeing the midpoint right at a six cent credit. And that was our goal with this trade. So our max risk is $3 minus that six cents on our ratio butterfly could be referred to as a Christmas tree, except for that we're adding additional risk onto it. The biggest thing about the ratio is that they all have to add up to the middle strike. So we are buying one of the 105s and we're buying two of the 99s and we're selling three of the 102s. So one plus two equals three. That means that we are protected on our trade. And another fancy way of saying this is what all that we're really doing is we're selling the an extra 102.99 put spread to pay for the entire butterfly. So a standard butterfly would be a one by two by one. We add a put spread to onto it, and it becomes a one by three by two. And now we can get this amazingly done for a net credit of five cents to the account. So if Amazon opens up tomorrow, even for the first hour, and you know is either up five points or down five points, not as much as expected, you're going to get a lot of time decay that's going to come out of this trade. If it continues on up, oh, oh, oh well, no big deal. Uh, we're going to make that six cents on the trade. But if it does go down and it starts drifting down, you would like it to come down slowly and you'd like to like it to land somewhere between the 105 and 102 level. That would be a great spot for it to land. Obviously, the home run would be right at the 102 level. That's where we would be at. So if I did wake up tomorrow and uh, the stock opened right around 102, I would just get out right away. I would uh, take the trade off. Uh, just because we're at that strike, you'd probably be down on the position because you didn't get enough time decay on those three middle option contracts. Um, but at that point in time, I just want to get out. If uh, the forecast is incorrect and the stock doesn't stay where it's at or, or drift lower a little bit like Google and Microsoft have, then uh, – then you just want to take your crumumpins and go on and then next week and then the next Amazon earnings we'll look at on probably another butterfly. But minimal risk on the trade, three dollars would be your maximum, and we're just doing a one by three by two butterfly. So let's summarize it and we'll call it a day. Uh, Amazon's announcing earnings on Thursday. Uh, we are taping the show on Wednesday, October 26th. The markets are closed. Amazon's last trade was 115. 66. We're going to go a little bit more than the expected move out of the money, and we're going to buy the October 28th expiration 105 put, then sell that same expiration and three of them of the 102 puts, and then go all the way down, same expiration, and buy two of the 99 puts. Looking to get this done midpoint right now is a net credit of six cents to the account. 
Now, as I said that we were going to be done, but I will also say that normally if you're going to do a trade like this, you would do it a little closer to the close. Uh, we're taping the show obviously on Wednesday. And if I were thinking about doing this trade, I would let the day play out tomorrow and then decide exactly uh, what strikes to pick based off of where Amazon was looking to close before their earnings announcement. But I would apply the same type of scenario. I want to get more than an expected move out of the money, and that's how I would approach it. That's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have any questions you'd like us to try to answer, please email them to me at theoptionsguy@invest.li.com. If you want to learn more about all of the events that we have over here at Ally Invest, please follow me on Twitter. I tweet about all of them. My handle is at Brian Overby. And that's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. May all the options that you buy finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>